Imagine this. You're in a good mood and decide to play some F123. You launch the game, look at the menu and consider what to do. You hop into some time trial, but after 50 minutes of hot lapping, you seek something different. Hmm, what about setting up a career mode? You go through the whole process of setting up your new journey, feeling excited, but then you realize that you've been playing basically the same career mode for years now, so you instantly lose the ambition. Suddenly, you remember something. Yes, the supercars. Or should I say, super boats? Now you're enraged. You've lost an hour's worth of lifetime and you quit the game instantly. Welcome to the current state of Formula 1 games. Alright, that might have been a bit of an exaggeration, but you understand the point. Even though F123 seems like a solid game with some nice possibilities, for some reason it isn't really fun, or at least not for long. But why? To comprehend what happened in recent years, we need to travel back in time all the way to 2015. F1 2015 was released and the reason I mention it isn't because it was particularly good, but because it was developed on a new game engine, EGO 4.0. This was quite an improvement over the EGO 3.0 engine used before, allowing for better graphics, handling model and AI. One year later, F1 2016 saw some significant changes in the career mode, revolutionizing the YouTube career mode series. It was also the first F1 game to introduce classic cars. Year after year, the games improved until 2020, which, in my opinion and according to many others, was the peak of the F1 game series. The biggest change in F1 2020 was the introduction of the My Team career mode, allowing the player to create their own team with their own livery and name, of course, while still being a driver. It was possible to choose a teammate, sponsors and even an engine manufacturer. I think it's pretty clear how the community reacted to this new mode, offering an alternative to the driver career mode that had been around for years. Everybody loved it. It was also the last game that included classic cars, which were never seen again later. Now, the reason I say it was the peak is simple. The games after F1 2020 were simply worse. I mean, sure, F1 2021 had the breaking point story mode, which by itself maybe wasn't even that bad, but let's be honest, it can't make up for a worse handling model, worse AI, a broken multiplayer and bugs at the beginning. And F1 2020 was only the beginning of the downfall. You see, EA took over Codemasters in February 2021, so that year's game was pretty much fully developed and managed by Codemasters and not by EA, as many say. So yes, F1 2021 was Codemasters fault, but still, in comparison to what was about to come, it was a pretty decent game. Ah yes, F1 22. The first game under EA's management and straight away a complete failure. Basically, nothing was added to the career modes. Still no classic cars, a completely unrealistic handling model that had by far not enough grip and broken AI that would turn in on you in slow speed corners. The breaking point story mode was also removed. What did we get in return? A few supercars with a horrible handling model that made them feel like literal boats on water and crossplay, which was the only vital feature added. Now F1 23 saw some big changes in the handling model, making it feel way more realistic. The AI has been fixed and controller support got an improvement. Breaking Point returned that year, but to be honest, it wasn't anything special. Yes, although it was better than F1 2021 and F1 22, it still offered basically the same but in a slightly better way. My point is that objectively speaking, all those games aren't bad, but once you get to a point where you play basically the same game for years now, it simply gets boring. In my opinion, the franchise is in a need of something completely different, something fresh. Now, we're in April 2024 right now, F124 has been announced and will release on May 31st. EA promises an overhauled career mode that, and I quote, will be rebuilt from the ground up. Now, we all know EA and their incredible skills to convince the player year after year to buy the games, and we also know what we actually got in 2022 and 2023. Now the question arises, is the new game really going to be way better? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the upcoming F1 game. Are you going to pre-order it or will you wait and see? But that's going to be it from me today guys. If you found the video informative, consider subscribing to my channel, my big goal is 100 subscribers. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.